Okay, okay. Cool. What is up, Facebook Live World? This is Sarah Moore. Sarah, um, we are going to talk about um, for parents and teachers, but about stress and stressful times and executive function. And um, but who are you? And and tell us uh, for the parents that don't know you. Sure. Well, hi, thank you for joining. I am Sarah Moore. I am the author of Peaceful Discipline, Story Teaching, Brain Science, and Better Behavior. I am a certified master trainer of conscious parenting. I am a board member of the American Society for the Positive Care of Children and the founder of Dandelion Seeds Positive Parenting. Most importantly, I am a real live parent raising a real live child. So it's not just theory. It's definitely practice here every single day as well. Thanks. And for everybody, we are live on the summit, uh, ra wrapping up in the next day or so on TFOs, the Executive Function Online Summit. If you like what we're doing, there's a link above. It's Sarah's link. Click it and register if you're not registered. But also, please share. That is how people find out about it. It's like, cannot. I'm just going to shamelessly ask. Please, if you like what we're doing, share it. We want people to find us. And Sarah, um, the we're going to talk about. So for parents today, how do we support our children's executive function skills during times of increased stress and our own? So what, where I want to start is I want to first ask, how does stress for the parent or the child, how does stress impact executive function? It's a pretty big deal because I'm going to use my Dan Siegel hand model of the brain here. When we are in fight or flight mode, which we are when we are in stress, our executive function skills that live right here in our prefrontal cortex, right at the front of our brain, they essentially go offline and we end up responding from our limbic system. We end up being re reactive. We don't think ahead about the consequences of our actions. We are just panicking as far as our nervous system is concerned. And so the tricky part comes in when we think, how can I possibly create enough safety in either my body or my child's body to help get this prefrontal cortex back online so that I can follow through with the executive function skills that I'm trying to have for day-to-day -day life as it is. And then, so then that leads to how, how do we support it? And so how do we support our children's and our own? Do we do them together at the same time? Do we do them separately? Do we do both? Great question. So there's a beautiful thing called co-regulation where we can do them together and find ways to essentially regulate or calm our nervous systems by essentially being mirrors of one another. We have something incredible in our brain called mirror neurons. So we can either make stress contagious or we can make calming contagious. Both are possible. And obviously we only want the calming flavor, right? So what we do is this is where kind of the solo part comes in first. We've got to regulate our own nervous system. And the tricky thing is a lot of the strategies that are out there today don't really work because they are strategies that require that we not be in fight or flight. For example, positive self-talk, telling myself, there's nothing to worry about. It's going to be okay. Well, guess what? That backfires because my nervous system doesn't believe me. Right. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, absolutely. My nervous system says, you're wrong. That is just toxic positivity. If I'm stressed, I'm going to respond from a stressed state. So while the positive talk is helpful and that it's nice to hear ourselves say positive things, what's much more effective is to use our bodies to access the nervous system that we have. So for example, some simple tools I can give right now, we might give ourselves a big squeeze just to remind ourselves that our body is here it's called proprioceptive input let's do it together Seth you have to create some safety they in our body they can't see me but I'm doing it right now because I'm like oh yeah sure. I could use that right now yeah if absolutely it works. oh did sure. you see me <laughs> so when you squeeze your body you essentially create the feeling of being back in the womb way back in the day when we were in the womb and it was a feeling of safety and security and being surrounded in this very very safe little environment we can also wiggle our toes 
because you know what, when we are in fight or flight, we spend a lot of time doing really shallow breathing. We are in panic mode. We are perhaps even hyperventilating or close to it. When we wiggle our toes or tap our feet, that's another quick way to remind our body that we have a whole body. Not everything is happening from here to here. We have a whole body we can work with. So when we can just get in touch literally and metaphorically with our body and remind Remind ourselves of the safety that we have in this moment. Some people will couple this with a prayer or a meditation or some way to use some grounding exercise that they have. This is really a great place to start. Some people will say, what about breathing exercises? I'm going to say maybe, but most of us need to feel emotionally safer before breathing exercises really start to work. Right now, again, if I'm in fight or flight, my breathing is very shallow and I might have a lot of trouble accessing deeper breaths. So try some of the body input first before you even try those breathing exercises. So start with yourself and then co-regulate with your child. You might have a mantra in mind, perhaps it's we are safe or all of your feelings are safe here, whatever your mantra is, but have something that you can use to keep yourself grounded while your child regulates alongside you and with you so that you can stay grounded and be the proverbial port in their storm to help them come back to a more regulated state. And the good news is it doesn't have to take very long. You can regulate fairly quickly most of the time if you use these body inputs to create that safety rather than simply trying to talk yourself or your child into feeling something other than what they actually feel in the moment. Thanks. And I was, um, I, I have a tech technology, social media type of question for you that around this stuff. And that is that um, I was, uh, I don't watch a lot of the shorts or the reels or anything like that. And I was watching something the other day and it went from one thing to the other, to the other. And I hate like feeling like I'm a slave to it, but I'm an adult and I don't like my phone, believe it or not. I do all this tech stuff, but it's not, I, I don't like to be on a lot. And, um, and it went from one thing to the next to the next. I was like, oh, interesting, interesting. And then the next one was like something that's so not aligned with my values. It was so inappropriate. It was so like, and I'm like, wow. And I'm just, and I, I'm, I mean, I'm in this world, so I know kids see this, but like, I, I was going to ask, do kids see this sort of change in like these different shorts or in, uh, on social media and stuff? And with co-regulation, our kids' nervous systems, our adults' nervous systems, can we co-regulate? And I know this is a rhetorical question with like TV or social media or like when somebody is like ranting mm -hmm. and stuff like that or when they uh, on these things, are kids' nervous systems impacted by that? And if so, what what what's the thought you have about that? Absolutely. I'm so glad you raised that because it is a reality of life today. I am a big proponent of the extent to which we are feeling or our child is feeling dysregulated. We need to proportionately decrease our tech input. We know that technology helps release, and I use helps very loosely, release chemicals in our body, dopamine, things like that, that we are not, not actually producing normally in that moment. We are being spurred on by the chemicals that are coming from watching the social media. What we want for true, authentic, and longer lasting peace in our homes is to limit the tech so that we can actually start fostering natural release of these chemicals the feel-good chemicals of I like being with you, I like hanging out with you, I like spending time with you, because those are much healthier than the ones we get in the quick hits from tech. So absolutely, if stress is up, decrease tech proportionately. Yeah, and what I was noticing a little more specifically, though, was like, where uh, this particular clip, like this person was very angry and passionate about something, and very, um, just judgmental. And I can see people or kids who don't have life experience listening to how convincing this person is, who is cruel and mean and unkind and, you know, stuff like that. And I guess speaking to is that impacting 
there if this person's like yeah these types of people are bad and blah 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 are our kids nervous systems feeling that fear and is that influencing them and what do parents do if they don't even know what their kids are being exposed to i'm sorry can you solve the world's problems right now sarah <laughs> yes for 9.99 a month i'll solve all the world <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, yes, absolutely. Kids' nervous systems are being impacted by that. And especially for the parent who doesn't know what is it that my child is exposed to and how is it manifesting? Parental intuition is a pretty strong thing. We might not know the details of what they're watching online, but if we do know, huh, my kid was spending time online and as soon as they turned it off, they seemed more agitated and I'm noticing a trend of them seeing ad, yeah. seeming agitated after watching tech. Odds are pretty good that there's something going on in the tech that is not really serving them or the relationship. Now, as a conscious parenting trainer, I'm not going to say, take away the tech as a punishment. That's going to backfire and it's going to harm the relationship. What I would recommend parents do in that case is sit down with the child and get curious and practice active listening. Now, this is really, really hard, but you might say something like, I'm noticing that you were on your phone earlier today and you seemed kind of stressed afterwards. I'm wondering what was going on for you. You don't necessarily want to say, for the past three months, I've seen a problem and we need to take away your phone. Very different vibe. But simply saying, I'm noticing some stress in your body. Have you noticed that too? See what they have to say. And without fixing, without judging, without suggesting that they decrease their tech, see if you can help your child understand because you listened well that maybe the tech is contributing to some of the problems. Because if they self-identify it being a problem and it's their idea to perhaps limit it, they're going to buy in much more than if you just say, time to take away the tech. Excellent. Good point. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Cool. Well, thanks, Sarah. Appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Thank you, Seth. Take care. Thanks. And this is uh last uh, day or so of the summit. You got the three days for free, like all the access. So check it out. Um, there's a link above. If you haven't registered, dive in now. Please share it. We put so much in this. Take the link, share it all around. Um, so people still register even up until um, before it ends and dive in. Um, and if you haven't checked out the All Access Pass, check it out. It's good. It's just an amazing parent resource that you can use all year to help your kid when you really need it. Anyhow, thanks, Sarah. And thank you all for being here. Take care, everybody.